Hi, I'm Doug Lyman, and I'm asking you to help me direct the movie Reckoning with Torture, which uses the government's own documents to tell the inside story of America's torture program. What we're asking you to do is to shoot your friends, your family, your neighbors, even yourselves, reading these inside documents. And we'll cut that together with footage we've shot around the country with actors, writers, uh, former CIA officers, military interrogators, uh, even Guantanamo prosecutors. And together, we'll set the record straight. If we can get enough people to hear these stories, then maybe we can get our government to never torture anyone ever again. I am reading an excerpt from a declaration of Lieutenant Colonel Darrell Vanderbilt, former lead prosecutor in the military commission case of Guantanamo detainee Mohammed Jawad. The records reflected... The records reflected 112 unexplained moves from cell to cell over a two-week period. I lack the words to express the heart sickness I experienced when I came to understand the pointless, purely gratuitous mistreatment of Mr. Jawad by my fellow soldiers. Holding Mr. Jawad for six years with no resolution of his case, with no terminus in sight, is something beyond a travesty. We're reading an excerpt, a transcript of former CIA director George Tenet's 60 Minutes appearance in April of 2007. I'm going to read from the sworn statement of an interpreter at the Kandahar Detention Facility in Afghanistan. I was handcuffed, blindfolded, and taken to a building where I was severely beaten. The detainee was almost unconscious on the floor with a pile of hair next to him. He had apparently been literally pulling his own hair out throughout the night. The detainee is securely shackled and is deprived of sight and sound through the use of blindfolds, earmuffs, and hoods. The rest of the page is redacted. America stands against and will not tolerate torture. You have informed us that you expect these techniques to be used in some sort of escalating fashion, culminating with the waterboard. This procedure triggers an automatic physiological sensation of drowning that the individual cannot control, even though he may be aware that he is, in fact, not drowning. They stripped us down naked and they tied a hand behind our backs. After 37 days without food, I was dragged into an interrogation room where a feeding tube was forced through my nose into my stomach. I was extremely ill. Lee played the call to prayer with a special alarm clock. Detainee was told, this is no longer the call to prayer. You are not allowed to pray. This is a call to interrogation. Then the real torturing started. It was difficult to breathe. I don't want to ask you about the evidence because you said the evidence was classified. But how can I respond to this? It is not a question and it is not an accusation. They want answers which you can't give them because you, you have no involvement in anything. Detainee became increasingly tired and incoherent. He slept for one hour, followed by one hour in his chair listening to white noise. What you're essentially saying is some people need to be tortured. No, I didn't say that. You call it in the book enhanced interrogation technique. Well, that's what we call it. I mean, that's a euphemism. I'm not having a semantic debate with you. I'm telling you what I believe. On another occasion, the AC had been turned off, making the temperature in the unventilated room probably well over 100 degrees. Anyone ever die in the interrogation program? No. You're sure of that? What, in the program that you and I are discussing, no. 